the language of our Quran and the language of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and all these narrations is the Arabic. So this is the religious importance of Arabic language. And uh, our all prayers are in Arabic. We are not allowed any Muslim, no matter he or she belongs to China or Japan or Africa or any country. No one is allowed to perform the prayers in any other language uh, besides Arabic. So learning of Arabic is our religious duty, religious uh, importance. And also this is a language that we can communicate to other Muslims as well. And if we have this like a medium of uh, communication, so it will increase more binding relationship, more love and closeness among our all the Muslim brothers and sisters. So keeping in mind the objectives and the goals and the purpose of this language, inshallah, we are going to embark on the journey of uh, learning a beautiful language that is known as Arabic, the language of the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So briefly, you can look at this handout that we have distributed today about the religious uh, importance of the language and also the historical uh, importance and the historical background of the Arabic language. So, you will find in this handout that the Arabic language is the language of the Noble Quran as we know that the Quran was revealed upon the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Arabic. So, paying due attention to Arabic means you are paying due attention to the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Studying and practicing of Arabic helps in understanding of the Noble Book of Allah and the narration of the master of the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is one. Now, the great scholars of Islam, they highly spoke about the language. And I just uh, have quoted one example. And I quoted this uh, statement on the day of Juma also in my Friday khutbah here from Shaykh al-Islam Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah alayhi. He said that in Naha Lugatul Deen, the Arabic language is the language of our deen. Because this is the language of the Quran and the Sunnah. And understanding of Quran and the Sunnah is obligation. Is an obligation on every Muslim. So we cannot understand without the language. So the language is the tool. Is the means and the tools to understand the Quran and the Sunnah. So this is the, Arab, the principle of the Islamic uh, fiqh and jurisprudence that whatever is uh, learning is obligatory, so the learning of the tools and the means is also, it becomes obligatory. So you can find this statement here of Imam the Taymiyyah, the Arabic language is from the religion and the knowledge of it is an obligation. For surely the understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah is an obligation and these two are not understood except with the understanding of the Arabic language. And whatever obligation is not fulfilled except by certain steps, then those steps themselves become obligatory to fulfill the initial obligation. The reference of this statement is from the book of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah and the name of that book is The Necessity of the Straight Path. Uh, volume number 1, page number 470. And then you will see the ayat of the Quran in which Allah SWT has uh, spoken and said about that uh, we have sent it down as an Arabic Quran in order that you may understand it, Surah Yusuf. And likewise Allah said this Quran is revealed in a plain Arabic language, Bilisan in Arabic Mubin. Despite this, many of the Muslims are content just to reading the translations of the Quran in their uh, native languages, English or Urdu or uh, Persian or whatever language. So we are uh, losing three things if we are just reading the translation. Though translation is very helpful to get the messages of Allah to understand uh, the, the language of the Quran, but three things are there that we are losing and missing if we are entire life if you are depending on those translations. First of all, we are missing the beauty of the speech of Allah. 
the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has its own beauty. And uh, if uh, someone is not uh, associated with Arabic, it does not know Arabic, so he cannot fully appreciate and enjoys the words and speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second thing, the uh, translation are done by the human beings. And always there is a reason for human factors. So there will be no mistake at all in the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the direct words of Allah. But there is a possibility of uh, human mistakes in the translations. And the third uh, reason is that if we do not know Arabic, so while we are performing our prayers, we cannot concentrate in our prayers, we cannot bring the focus that is called khushu of the prayer. And khushu is the highest quality of the prayer. If the khushu is not there, meaning your concentration and focus is not there in the prayer, so our mind is somewhere else during the prayer. Though we are bowing down, we are standing, we are making ruku and sujood, all the movements we are doing, but the ruh, the essence of the prayer is not there. The life of the prayer is not there. So our prayer becomes lifeless. So this is another uh, <coughs> missing point that uh, we are not getting it if we do not know Arabic. So for all these three reasons, it is uh, very must that we must learn Arabic. And here is a story, a beautiful story of a sheikh. The, his name is Sheikh Umar Uzbek. So he worked for Islam in, Uz in Uzbekistan and originally he was from Turkish. So his story was narrated by another alim and a scholar who wrote a book in 1972. And this scholar is Sheikh Abdullah uh, Al-Batili. So he wrote the following story in his book. So he says, May Allah's mercy be on Sheikh Umar Uzbek, he, a great Turkish man. He is true for Islam in Uzbekistan, in Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan under the Russian government. And he was uh, f fighting against the enemies of Islam with the fire that was iron and tongue, but that was his speech. So then he re took refuge in Afghanistan. And then he vowed back in 1932 that I'm not going to speak my own language that was Turkish language. He vowed that I'm only going to speak only the language of Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah that is Arabic. And then this alim who wrote this story, he said that his wife and his children, his family, they were in Turkey. So they approached me and they asked my help that I should uh, talk to the sheikh, Sheikh Umar Uzbek, that please talk to your family because your family do not know Arabic. How do you talk to your wife? How do you talk to your children? So sheikh, he, uh, at that time, he expressed his pain and... Uh, suffering that he saw from the Russian people and he saw that and he said that when the Russian people they occupied our lands and they forced us Muslims to learn their language Russian language then I realized that when people they learn the language of any nation the people it's not the only language they want to teach you each and everything their culture their values and everything even your way of thinking changes your way of thinking becomes like those people. So he said, I do not want to make any compromise on that. And he conveyed a message to his wife and his children that if you would like to communicate with me, there is the only way that you learn Arabic. Learn the language of Quran and the Sunnah, then you can talk to me. And he refused the request that his wife said, even for one hour if he can talk to us in Turkish language. But he said no. So that was uh, a great commitment to this language from the, this sheikh and it's very inspiring uh, for all of us. Though we are not asking over here that we should stop talking to our uh, family in our languages, but it shows the importance. And uh, we are getting a wisdom from the sheikh Umar that he realized from Russian people. And he said that... Uh, Russians had compelled us to learn perfectly the Russian language by force, so we learned it. And unless they knew that the learning of the Russian language will make the person who learns it follow their ways of thinking, character and their tradition, they would not 
have forced anybody to learn it. He further said to me, I have vowed to Allah long ago not to speak except in the language of the Quran and Sunnah, that is Arabic, and I do the, that only for Allah's sake. If my wife and children desire to enjoy speaking with me, <coughs> they should learn the language of the Quran and of the Prophet wasallam, And I am ready to teach them the Quranic language whenever they desire that. So the, this is also taken from the book and you have the reference. Now, the historical perspective of the Arabic language. You probably have heard the name Semitic languages. Semitic languages, they are from uh, the Middle East part and some other famous languages are Hebrew and Aramic. So Arabic is also one of those languages. But again, it is the blessing of the Quran and blessing of the Ahadith of Rasulullah that other Semitic languages are dead today. You will not find many people are speaking those languages. But Alhamdulillah, Arabic is still alive and it is spoken by more than 200 million people. The native Arabic speaking people are more than 200 million people and it is the official language of 50 countries of the world. It is also an official language of the United Nations and uh, we, Alhamdulillah, we are all Muslims and we know the existence of Arabic, the use of Arabic, the practice of Arabic as a spoken language. Uh, the documentation of Arabic language begins with the rise of Islam, whose main texts are written in Arabic. We can divide Arabic into three parts. One is classical Arabic, one is uh, formal or standard Arabic, that is called modern standard Arabic, and third is spoken Arabic with the regional dialects. So classical Arabic is the Arabic of the Quran and the Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and it is not spoken at the modern time in the Arab countries. So this is uh, just the standard uh, language of our religious texts. Though it was spoken by the Prophet ﷺ at his time, in back in 7th century and 8th century and all those times, this was spoken by the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. But it is so important to learn this classical Arabic still now and for the times to come, especially for a person who would like to become an alim, uh, Islamic scholar, because understanding of the Quran and the Hadith depends only on learning of the classical Arabic. The second type of Arabic is modern standard Arabic and it developed from the different styles of the classical Arabic and the expansion of the vocabulary in the classical Arabic. So basically if we go back just to two centuries ago, 19th century and 20th century, the Arab world they developed and they created this modern standard Arabic. Now modern standard Arabic is the language of their print media and the electronic media. You will see all the newspapers in Arabic countries, the magazines, the journals, the internet, the TV news. This is the language of uh, the communication. And when the head of state